Hi everybody, this morning I'm back up at the workshop just sorting out some more supers, converting them to eights. But I thought I'd show you this because it's interesting to show how I've um, evolved and made little changes during my transition to commercial beekeeper. Uh, this is one of the classic things I've had to sort out from my life as an amateur before. So this honey super is one of, I think, 30 I had that I when I started as an amateur. And you'll notice something about it straight away is this. This is the um, bit of wood I put on the outside that a lot of amateurs do when you're trying to uh, run things as smooth as you can and hopefully to increase the ability to pick up the super when you're kind of handling it. And it, for me, it worked really well, but... If you, the key to the problem is this and this. When you're trying to move this super around and trying to stack it on your truck, the problem is, I, as you probably saw uh, on one of my previous videos, when I load my truck, I can get four of these across lengthways, but with these on, I can't. So with all the supers I had that are in use at the moment, I've got about, I'd say, 30 to 40 of these, that from when I, when I first started. What I'm doing today is I'm actually converting this to, um, so this is the moment, this is nines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is nine frames in, in a box that will take 10 or eight. And the reason why it's nine is because these are the first ones I bought. And when you buy amateur equipment, they generally send you not, sell you nines in a box because nines will kind of always get built. They won't build them too wide. In other words, they won't have times when they'll build in between the frames. So if you need to clean your frames out and rebuild them again, nines will still work if they're in foundation. Whereas if you've got plastic frames, you, they don't really rebuild them in plastic batticad that we use in the plastic frames or nines. You need to get them back to tens before you can rebuild them. Once they're rebuilt, you can move them to eights again. So... Because I'm only now on plastic frames, I need to get rid of these nines. I mean, as romantic as, as it is, it's lovely to have nines because they always get built when you put the plastic frames in, but you still don't get that economy when you've got eights. So I'm either having eights or tens. So I'm doing a couple of jobs at the same time here. I'm removing all the old bits, making it a super. And here's some I've just done. I'm basically converting these down. That's where the band of wood was. You can see all around, comes off pretty easily. And inside you see we've got all, all the boxes scraped clean, ready to use. And that's now ready to take an eight. But I'm, I'm converting all this because it's, a, it's the step of my management to be able to be more efficient. And I'm doing it in the winter when I've got time. You can't do this kind of stuff in the summer. You know, you've got to have all the bits. And will I paint this? Probably won't because it'll be kept under cover till it's used. The wood is seasoned and hard. Um, it's propolized on the inside. And I know that this was a box that was one of my original ones that is, um, that is uh, now converted to an eight because I'll see that band around it. And that's what I'm doing, basically. I'm just kind of making good of what I had before, but making it better. So I can, whenever I go to my apron now, I'll always be able to uh, stack those four boxes across on my truck and have more space or just get more on. That's what I'm doing. I'm making it more efficient as much as I can. And to give you some idea, these are some of the really old boxes I had. Now, these really aren't worth converting back. They're made of a wood that was scrap wood. I've got the band around the outside. They're on eights and nines. You can see I didn't even get the actual um, metal supports, the castellations. I didn't even get them straight. See how shallow it is there and deep there. This is what we call classic amateur. <laughs> but, you know, another one here. I'm not going to bother changing this box because you can look at the wood. It's all made. It's all homemade wood. It's just rubbish. I mean, I could, I could waste time converting that. I mean, look at that. It's just... You know, this is what you do when you first start. You don't have a clue. 
Underneath here is interesting. These are a few of the very, very old boxes that were used by um, my uh, teacher, Charles Basson. I, I bought nine of him when I, or I think nine or 10, when I, um, when he kind of retired. But they're so old now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use them in the apron. We're gonna give them a, a clean. We're gonna use them in the apron just as outside uh, protector so basically if you've got a mini plus and you want to put it on top of a hive and you want to then put some supers around the outside of the mini plus you can because that these will just still be protection they'll be like a shell so they'll be still be useful in apiary or they'll be used as a feeding shell so uh that's kind of what they'll be used for now and there's always a use for old supers you can take we'll probably still take the outside off even though these probably aren't worth it we'll take the outside off and we'll use them for other things you know so here's some more over here Exactly the same, these are the really old ones. Some of them are good. So that one's good, that one's good, that one's good. That's rubbish, that's rubbish. You can just see straight away what I used to use. These are worth saving. This, you can see the old metal on these. They used to make the aluminium so thick, it was fantastic. This was like a, a quality, when, when these um, uh, castellations were made, those were made in the days where, you know, they didn't have to worry about about quality and price. They made the best quality and you could use these, reuse these again and again. The ones you buy now are probably a third of this thickness, but that's just the way it was. So let's go back to the workshop. I'll carry on, I'll strip one down and show you what I do and how I do it. So I kind of show you the process. It's a bit long-winded, but I'll, I'll edit it down so it's not too long. But the first job is to remove this band and I did it luckily with um, most of these screws that have Phillip heads on them. So, they do mostly come out. Now we're back to a super. <clears throat> so this is a super on eight and, and a lot of times in older boxes they used to put these in. Now these are the supports that when you move, if you move the frames, it's supposed to stop the frames moving. To be honest, none of our main supers have got these in anymore. We've, we've, we've got rid of them all because we just feel it's a waste of time. And obviously, because I'm converting these to, to uh, eights, there's nine of these and they won't fit in an eight. So these have got to come out and they come out pretty easily. You just use a pair of these and they do lift out pretty well. There's no real technique to this. It's just do what you can, pull them out with some decent pliers or some decent grabbers, whatever you call them. And they do come out pretty well. So that's this out. These are just wedged in and then they get properized in by the bees. That's out, that's done. Next job is to remove the old castellation. So with this, we find the best way is with a hive tool and you get behind it. And as you do this, you see, often they're actually not that well in because these are nailed on these ones. It's actually easier for us if they're screwed on, to be honest. So you get behind that, work your way down, and the metal does actually stay around the base of each, each little pin nail, and they do come out. So there you go, that's all out, that one. It's one of the best ones I've actually taken out. So um, there's the old nine. You can reuse that, you can scrape it off if you want to reuse it, but what do you use it for? The whole idea is we use eights or tens now. So that's out, and what I tend to do is I have a brush with me all the time, and I keep everything really clean so I can see what's going on. Because there's nothing worse than having a super on the table and you're like, it's, and there's a nail underneath and stuff like that. That's just the way I work it. So now we've got the chance we can scrape this out. Because the easiest way to clean out the groove in your supers is when it's nice and dry. And this is dry, as I said, so it comes out really well, you know. Have to, maintenance of equipment is, is, I say super important, is the joke because it's, 
it's to do with your supers, but it is really important. And while I'm here, because I have, these haven't been done for a while, I'll clean all this off as well. You can see that is a nice, clean, cleaned up super, all ready to go. Nothing wrong with it. It's solid, there's no movement in the joints. If these are nailed together, these supers, but they were nailed when I bought them, so I'm hoping they were nailed in really well, and they seem to be because they're solid. If they weren't, I would probably put extra screws in here across these joints now, but there's just no need. So, here's our new castellations on eights. This is so easy to do, and that's why I do it. They've even got a groove that was taken out before, so you sit that in the new groove and screw them in. We tend to use these screws from Sicat, it's called. They're square headed screws. And um, I can show you these are the, that's the, this isn't the size. Actually, this is the size we're using for this. We're using a three by 20. But Sicat is a French make of screws and they're really good for like largest amounts of, um, you can see their website there. I'm giving them a free plug because they're awesome, the screws they make. So, um, they're good screws. We, we buy them in bulk and they're, they're really cheap, you know? But, so basically I've got all these. Just take one, they fit on the end well. Your first one you put in, you gotta get it tight. So you gotta get exactly where you want it. And often the holes from the previous, the previous screws are in the same place as the nails, but there were nails last time, these are screws this time. And I tend to do the two extreme ends first, like this. What I do is I, I sink the um, screws in as deep as I can get them. And the reason being is when you come to clean the boxes next time, you can slide your hive tool over the whole band. And it enables you to clean it properly. If your screws aren't countersunk properly, when you come to clean it, you never can. So that's that 10 done. And I'll just give you an example, see? I can slide the high pole up and down now when I want to clean it. It's a little tip I've learned as well, that when you're cleaning boxes in a hurry, you need, you need to have your screws countersunk, because otherwise they, they get stuck. So you can do that, and when you're in a hurry to get the stuff cleaned and it's done. So easy, such a simple tip. Last one. Okay, so. We spent a bit of time on this super, but now we've got a really good super again that will last me 10, 15 years, maybe more, if I'm careful with them. It's got the new castellations on eights. It's all tidy, it's all clean, they're screwed in properly, that will never budge. Done. Another thing of winter management, winter time, trying to get things, uh, equipment up straight. You know, it's a no brainer. We, we, you just have to get everything universal in commercial beekeeping and that's what you have to do you, you can't use different supers different hives all the time you just haven't got the time i can't emphasize more on the necessity this time of year to keep cracking on with these jobs because we are lucky here we have mild winters i mean i couldn't imagine what it's like uh, if it was like snowing all the time and freezing and like deep cold, you know, to get work done outside is very, very difficult. So um, I'm just getting on while I can. When the weather's good, I'm working doing this. So I hope you enjoyed that. Speak to you again soon. Bye for now.